Hey guys, it's Bella, and in this video we are reading over leaf number seven of the Skidians. And as usual in these videos, if you want to have a go at translating each sentence before I do, you can pause the video, write your translation, and then check your translation against what I say in the video. And let's get on with it. As usual, the first word is cut off, so we're not going to fully be able to interpret what the sentence means. But this is Kronandins Freuens macht jach anpackjandins sick is wildness. So what this means is the might of the knowing lord macht Kronandins Freuens jach anpackjandins sick and um reminding himself and Thakyandins is Waldufnis of his power. Um I honestly don't can't figure out what the whole of the sentence means because it's cut off. So we'll go into this next one. Nich ist ens Akyach Andreas Sai Quath ist Magula ens her Sai Haveth Fimf Levans Berzinens Nans Yach Twans Fiskans Analikos we Filipus Kasakava, ni wech mikilis hogians, ni quertidos lessardis than anthakians. Therch thoi uspar quitans, aki fatahua is du swam managem. So, what does this mean? The first clause, up to, from Nick up to Andreas, a uh, Nick is ens ak yach Andreas. So, and it is not one but also Andreas. And if you hear a dog barking in the background, I do apologise, I can't control it. Um, there is there is not just one, but also Andreas. So presumably it's not just one man who is doing this or arguing this, but Andreas as well, or Andrew as well. Sae quath, that man who said, Ist magula ens her, sae haveth fin flemans. So, um, there is, Magula is um, a little boy because the illa suffix in Gothic is the diminutive and it means, you know, little. So there is a little boy here, one little boy here, ens. Sai haveth fim flevans berzinons. Who ha that man, or that boy who has, five barley loaves. Flevans berzinons. Yachtwans fiskans. And he has two fishes. Analikos we Philippus Gasakada. Philippus Gasakada argued differently. Analikos we. Ni wecht Michaelis Hugians ne huerthi dos lessardis anthakians. So, not thinking ni Hugians wecht Michaelis. So, I think this is an accusative infinitive construction that we've got going on here. So, Philip argued this not thinking. Wecht, it to be anything. Wecht, Michaelis, of a great thing. Nech werthidos les servis anthakyandans. And not remembering werthidos of the greatness, les servis, of his teacher. So Philip argued differently, not thinking this to be a great thing, and not remembering his teacher's greatness. Those things, th through the things which he removed, saying, But that, or rather, but what is that to so many? So, what what the, this commentary is saying is that in the story of the feeding of the multitude, which of course is what this, what these Bible passages are referencing, and by the way, I've got a video going over the Gothic story of the feeding of the multitude on my channel if you look in my readings in Gothic playlist, um, and I contrast it with some lovely Ostrogothic art which details the miracle. Um, but what this is saying is that um, Andrew said that there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fishes. Philip, you know, was doubting or, or, you know, didn't believe that the Lord could make these five loaves and the two fishes last for such a multitude of people. Um, and that's why he said about those things, which the boy brought, he said, but what is that to so many people?
So that's what this um, clause means. Uh, now, sorry, this sentence means. I'll go from start to finish once more time. So, and it is not one, but also Andreas, that man who said, there is a little, one little boy here, that boy who has five barley loaves and two fishes. Thus, Philip argued differently, not thinking it to be anything, any great thing, nor remembering the worthiness of his teacher, saying, oh, sorry, um, through those things which the boy removed, saying, or through those things which he removed, saying, but what is um, that to so many people. So, that's what this passage means. If Freya andati lons ise new clachin quath, worketh thons mans anacumbion. But the Lord, um, being devoted basically unto lons or being zealous towards ise new clachin, um, for their novelty basically, or, or spoken novelty of them. Warkith Thansman Anakumbian. Make those men um recline, lie down. Anakumbian is quite an interesting verb in Gothic. It, it actually comes from the Latin word uh, recumbere, which means uh, to lie down, and it shows that the Ostrogoths were actually adopting uh Greco Roman customs for feasting because they started to feast lying down. The fact that they didn't have this word before and had to borrow it from the Latin shows that the um weren't dining in this way before contact with the Romans, but after contact with the Romans, it became common enough that they would need to have this word. So, now, so Jesus has made the multitude lie down in order to demonstrate novelty, and let's go on to this bit. If is at hoya managamba wisan din in thamastava, for philos na anacumbion gata videdun, fim fusun dios vere in quinons yach barna sue at michelama nachta matta, anacumbion dans at ni wisandin alie wechte ufarthans, fim flevans yach twans fiscans, fanzi nimans yach awiliudons gathiotida, yach swam managega nochians in zuela wisne, ni thatenega nochan thorthes im fagath, ach philos meso. Afarthati matida so managi, bigitan was thise hleve, um, why is that? Twelve tenions fullos fati aflifnova. So, <laughs> so that is, if you can believe it, that's one complete sentence. Because in the manuscript itself, in the Skidian's manuscript, we actually see these, um, the, the uh, colons and these little points in the middle. They're called percola et gomata in, um, in Latin. And they basically mark the end of a sentence. So this is this is a whole sentence in Gothic, and it's like a paragraph. It's amazing, right? So let's tackle the first one. Uh, no, let's tackle the first two first, actually, because in this first clause, up until the first little collar, comma, we don't have um, a verb, so we can't actually do much to translate this. So it is um, at hoya managama wisandan in thamastava. So we'll tackle these. Datives first. So, at hoya managama wisandin. That's all one um, prepositional phrase, and it means with that um, great grass field of being. Hoya, um, how I should say is a, a grass field. So, with a great grass field being in thamastada, in that place, um, is a fulfilus na anakumbian gatawi deidun. Is is they. So they. They made or caused for filosna that multitude anacumbion to lie down, and you could also read this as an accusative infinitive construction. So you can read it as they made it so that the multitude lay down. Um, so from here to here, it means meanwhile, um, with there being a, a great grass field in that place, they caused that multitude to recline. Fimf thusun jos verre in och quinons jach barna sway at Michelama nachtamata anacumbiandans at ni wisandin alle wechte ufferthams. Um, 
fünf Flavoren, sich dran fiskans. So, um, and actually I've glossed these wrong. These two should be red. Fünf Fusun Jos and also Anna Kumbiandans. So it's 5,000 uh, of the men in a Quinon's uh, 5,000 of the men without women and children. As if at a great night feast, Nachtamat, on a Kumbiandans, um, sitting down, at Ni Wisandin Aljewechte, with no other thing being, Ufarthans Fim Flevans, beyond those five loaves and those two fishes. So, what this is saying is, the disciples made this entire crowd lie down, 5,000 men uh, without women and children. And there was nothing else, you know, to eat except for the five loaves and the two fishes. Thansi nimans yach awiliudons gathiuthiva. Those which the man taking them and giving thanks, he blessed the, the loaves and the fishes. And this is referring to Jesus, of course. So, um, let's go with the nominative first. Ganochians um, is um, sufficing. And um, ins is like sufficing for them, or like being enough for them, right? So, the man being enough for them, that man, of course, being Jesus. Fragaf, um, he granted him to them, ni thatteni, um, not only ganochan thorftes, a sufficiency for their desire, des no, need, um, it's really difficult to translate this word, ganocha is sort of, um, yeah, um, sufficiency or f f fulfillment, um, and then we, the last words we have is a swa manare wellawizne, um, with such a great nourishment, basically. So, what this means from start to finish is, and sufficing that for them, he gave to them not only um, a satiation of need through such a great nourishment, ak filos mezo, but much more so. After he had eaten, or it had eaten, so manari. So after the, the multitude, so manari had eaten. Begitan was, these are Of these loaves was found twelve tenios fullos. Twelve full tenions is um, wicker baskets. Fati aflivnova, that survived from the, um, from the crowd. So, from start to finish, what this means is, and that you can watch where my cursor goes, obviously, to see which word I'm translating. Meanwhile, with a great grass field being in that place, they caused that multitude to lie down. 5,000 of the men, without women and children, as if at a great night feast, reclining, with no other thing being there beyond those five loaves and the two fishes, those which, receiving and blessing them, Jesus gave thanks, or blessed them, and sufficing for them, he gave them not only a satisfaction of their need through such a great um, nourishment, but much more. After the multitude had eaten, it was found of these loaves, twelve baskets full that had survived. <laughs> so <laughs> that was... A really, really long sentence in the Gothic language. It might be one of the longest detested sentences that we have in the Gothic language. So, Samali Koch van Yach Ant Name Wunna Fise Fiske Swa Filus We Wildedun. 
And similarly, then, they took up of these fishes as much as they wished. So they had an abundance of fish as well. Nichthan anathem hlevam ennam enem sinesos machtes philos na usteknida ak yach enthem fiskam. So nichthan uh, not and not then anathem hlevam ennam enem not on those loaves only sinesos machtes philos na um, an abundance, Philusna, Sinesos Machtes, of his power, was technither, he demonstrated, Akiach, but also in them Fiskam. So this is saying that Jesus did not only demonstrate an abundance of his might uh, through the loaves, but also through the fishes. Swa filu oxwegam manwida in swerthan, swai en huariamech, swa filus we wilda andiniman is katawida. In ni in wechte one nina so these fillus ne werthan godawida. Aki no ustama fillu messiponions fulla fahida, yach antarans gamodida gomion. Fati is wasa sama sai in othide, thusun yere atans easy fordida. Yeah, okay. Forty, uh, fidward higuns yere, I should say, atans easy fordida. So, what does this mean? Um, so I feel you oxwig and man with that in the weather. So, so I feel you So, that is as much, however, as Gaman with that in the weather. He prepared them to become, um, and or rather, yeah, he or he or he prepared to happen to them. It's a difficult one to translate. Swai en huariamech. Thus it happened en huariamech to each one, to each man. Swafidus we wildna andiniman is as much as he wished to take. So basically, what he's saying that like Jesus made it so that every man had enough that he could take as much food as he wanted. Gatawida. Jesus made that happen. Yachni in wechte one in us with the philus ne wedangatawida. So, and not in anything. Yachni in wechte one in us, so a waning, a, a, um, a deficiency. Fize philus ne for this multitude. Wedangatawida. Wedangatawida is again very difficult to translate, but it means to come to pass and then gatawida. So, we can read this as an accusative infinitive construction, meaning that also Jesus did not make it so that a uh, deficiency came to pass in anything for this multitude. Um, so that's how we can translate that bit. Akinoch ustama filu mes siponyas fula fachida. But still, ustama, out of that, filu mes siponyans. Many more disciples, Fido Fachida, here he served basically, Yach Antaranska Mordida Gomian, and he reminded the others, Gamordida Antarans, um, Gomian, to, to take notice essentially. So, what this is saying is that um, Jesus made many more, got many more converts from the feeding of the multitude, and even those who he didn't convert to become disciples. They um they were aware of him. They were paying attention to Jesus' miracles, and they realized that Gormion, Fati is was sa sama, that he that's referring to Jesus was sa sama. He was the same man, sai in othide, um, vidvorti gunziere atan ize fodida, who fodida atan ize fed the fathers of them, uh, in othide in the desert. For um for forty years. So this is of course referring to the story of Exodus feeding and when the Hebrews received manna from heaven. So let us get on with this. So from start to finish, I should say. So as much indeed as he prepared to happen for them. 
Thus happened for each man, as much as he wished to take. Jesus made that happen. And he made, he did not make a deficiency come to pass in anything for this multitude. But still, from that, he served many more disciples and he made the others realize that he was that same man who had fed their fathers in the desert for 40 years. So there we go. And then on to the last bit. Thanuch bite sade wortun, quoth siponyam sinem, galiseth thos afleif nantins drosnos, i wechte ni fraquistne. Thanuch galesun yach ga fully redun, twelve tenions gabruko ostem fim flevam, barisinam yach twam fiscam, thati afleif nada at them. And then it cuts off. So, Thanuch Pide Sade Worthun means, um, and when they became Worthun Sade, um, satiated. And it's interesting to note also that um, this is definitely explicitly a, um, a mixed gendered. Wait, hold on. Well, actually, no, because uh, it says, 5,000 years where they inuch quinon zach barna. So it's 5,000 men without women and children, and that would be why. So that would be why it's masculine instead of neuter because the gothic language uses um the neuter plural to describe a group of mixed sex whereas um it latin for instance would use the masculine plural to describe a mixed sex group but this is a single sex group with only men and that's why you've got the masculine plural sade here so and when they were full jesus spoke to his disciples Gather together those aflifnanins surviving or remaining drosnos, those crumbs. And I like I love that we have a gothic word for crumbs, drosna or drosno. Very fun. Iwechte ni frakwistne. So that um it may it may diminish in nothing. So what he's saying is that so that the leftovers may not diminish in any way or be lost in any way. Thanuch galesun yach gafulideidun twelve tenios gabrukko. And then galesun yach gafulideidun, they gathered and they filled twelve tenions, uh, twelve wicker baskets gabrukko of, um, of crumbs or of fragments. Ustem fim flevam ver from those five barley loaves, yachtwam fiskam, and two fishes, fati of lifnoda at them, that which remained at them from those or with those, and then that's the end of the sentence, that's where it cuts off. So that was it. This That was the um, Scudians chapter seven, reading over the um, significance for the Ostrogoths of the feeding of the multitude miracle i i personally just like really love that we have um this account of the um because there's so there's so many things we can do with this because we have this in the skeetings and we have um this story attested in the gothic bible itself and because we have contemporary latin language sermons by the ostrogothic arian church which um we know that they were listening to so we can see both the perspective from Ostrogothic Latin literature and the perspective from Ostrogothic Gothic literature and from the Gothic Bible itself on um, how they are telling this story of the feeding of the multitude. And also it's, and I, I probably will do a video actually contrasting these two because it's a very interesting opportunity to compare um, how different Gothic authors might write about uh, the same event because the Bible translation in Gothic is very literal. It's word for word. So one Greek word, one Gothic word. And this is the reason why I personally don't think that we have authentic Gothic syntax in particular surviving in the Gothic Bible. But the Scanians is different. It's that Masman and other scholars have done an analysis showing that it could well be a very close translation of a Greek commentary on the Gospel of John by Theodore of Heraclea. But without the Greek text in front of me, I can't verify that 
beyond what Massman has already done either way. And there is still scholarly debates, to my understanding, as to whether or not the Scythians is completely a translation or if it's a commentary drawing very heavily on Theodore of Heraclea's commentary. Um, we would need to have the full text of Theodore's commentary surviving in Greek to be able to do that. And to my knowledge, only fragments of this have survived, but the, those fragments do seem to match up quite well to parts of the Scythians, although it's not as much of a word-for-word -word correspondence as we seem to have in Wolfiller's translation of the Gothic Bible. But my point being in this massive prelude was to say that because this is not actually a quote from the Bible. There are quotes from the Bible here. For instance, I put these um, uh, guillemets on either side so that we know which bits are quotes from the Bible and which are the Scythians' own writing. And the fact that we have this, it, this is a, but this is not really commentary. This is just a um, a summary of events, right? He make that they made the multitude lie down, and um, Jesus blessed the loaves and the fishes, etc. So what this is, we can then compare how the Scythians' author or translator is describing the miracle of the feeding of the multitude against the original Gothic Bible to see um, if there are any important differences in syntax or in how they choose to phrase things. And that might be something that I should do um, in a different video. I may well decide to do that. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments if you had listened this far and you would like to see that video contrasting the two. So... Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want me to teach you Gothic or any of the other languages that we do here on this channel, you can join my Patreon, which will be linked in the description of this video. You can also join my Discord server where we regularly do free language learning stuff. And it's also just a fun community of like-minded people who are quite active, at least at the time of the recording of this video. So, you know, come and join us, um, have some fun and like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video for the final. Guys, this is going to be the final um, chapter of the Scalians. It's going to be emotional. All right. If you've been following the whole series, I'll see you guys then. See you later.